dihybrid cross shortcut. So we're given this cross right here and we're asked to find what is the chance of getting this. Well you apply the same neutral method of first writing out the whole dihybrid cross. Once you write out the whole thing then you get the genotypic ratio, the genotype of it, and then you find what is the chance of getting this one right here, as asked. So if you do it that method, it's going to take you at least 5 to 10 minutes. Well, there is a shortcut way of doing it. It's a very simple rule. This question may or may not be on your teacher's test, but it will be often found on the AP exam. And it's also often found on the SAT as well. So to save you time, rather than writing out the whole dihybrid cross and figuring it out, so to save time, we can just figure out the shortcut. Okay, so we do our dihybrid cross, and then we have the genotype ratio. Then we look at what was asked. It was asked for the heterozygous for both traits. What's the chance of getting the heterozygous for both traits, genotype-wise? So we look and we find it's right here. Heterozygous for both traits, chances are 4 out of 16. So that's the long way. Let's do it the short way. So let's say here you're giving another one, for example. You're giving a uh, cross two plants that are heterozygous for both traits. So we write it out, heterozygous for both traits. There's one, there's the other, and then we cross them together. And they're asked us, what is the chance of finding total dominant for both traits? So here we are, here's our cross. And total dominant for both traits is this one, and that seems to be the only one. So the chances are 1 out of 16. Okay, so again, doing the dihybrid cross is going to take you around 5 to 10 minutes. Let's do it the short way. Okay, so we're giving our heterozygous for both traits, and we're asked to find the dominant for both traits. So we use what is called the multiplication rule. This method is found in your algebra class, but I don't know why usually a biology teacher they don't teach this to the students. It's really simple though. So first, what you do is you're going to isolate the allele. You're going to isolate and separate them. So here you have the heterozygous allele for D crossed with the other side. And you do the same thing to the T. So the first rule is isolation. The second rule is you're going to turn it into a monohybrid cross. So here's our monohybrid cross for D. So we have big D, big D, big D, small D, big D, small D, and then small D, small D. Now we're going to do the same thing to the T. We have big T, big T, big T, small T, big T, small T, and then small T, small T. So then you're going to figure out the percent of getting each one. Okay, so what's the percent of getting dominant for both? Over here, you only have a one-fourth chance of getting big D, big D. And on the right-hand side for the T, what's the chance of getting a dominant trait for homozygous T? And that's also one-fourth as well. Then you multiply both of them together and you get 1 16. So the chance of getting homozygous for both traits is 1 out of 16. Let's check. So we did our dihybrid cross. Here's 1. And that's about it. That's the only thing there is. So the chances of getting the homozygous dominant for both traits is 1 out of 16. So the multiplication rule works. Let's try a different one. This time let's try for a heterozygous for both. So first, what do you do? We isolate. So over here we have our D and then we over here we have our T. And then the second thing you do is a monohybrid cross. So here you cross it already and we can find what is the chance of getting a heterozygous for big D small D. So here's one, here's two, so that's two out of four. What about heterozygous for T? So there's one, there's two, that's also two out of four. So 2 out of 4 is 2 out of 4 is equal to 4 out of 16, and you can reduce it to 1 fourth. So the chance of getting this after you work it out is going to be 1 fourth chance. Heterozygous for both traits. Let's find out. So we did our cross again, and then there it is. Heterozygous for both traits, 1 fourth chance. So you see, it's very fast doing this. Let's try another one. Let's go back to our round and uh, color one for our piece. So what is the chance of getting this? A homozygous recessive for this and a heterozygous for this trait. So first we apply the multiplication rule. We isolate the variable, which is r with this r, and then y with this y. And then we do a monohybrid cross for both of them. 
So here we take the R cross with this R, we put it into our monohybrid cross, and here's our result. Then we do the same thing in the Y, we isolate them, we do a monohybrid cross, and this is our result. So what is the chance, what are they asking for? Chance of getting too small R, and we look over here, it's 0%, and then this one, it's 2 out of 4. So first, this is 0% chance, and this is 2 out of 4 for the Y, so our total is 0. So well, the chance of getting this cross, this gamete, is 0% chance. Okay, and we look, we check, we do a dihybrid cross, which takes around 5 to 10 minutes, and then we find out, look, there is no of getting, there's no chance of getting this trait. So you see the multiplication rule is much faster than having to do the whole dihybrid cross, which takes you 5 to 10 minutes. All you have to do is isolate, turn it into a monohybrid cross for the uh, allele that are the same, and then figure out the percent, the chances, and then multiply them, and that's it. Simple as that. Hope that helps.